Law Warrior Online. ALM-7D Fireball. Overview. While trying to formulate a strategy to counter the clan onslaught, Federated Commonwealth commanders held a series of talks with designers at the New Avalon Institute of Science. One outcome of the discussions was a decision to build a light battle mech that could support heavier units against the surprisingly deadly clan elementals. Korean Enterprises was awarded the contract for what would become the ALM-7D Fireball. Capabilities A product of the panic that gripped the Inner Sphere when the clans first appeared, the Fireball was envisaged as a quick vehicle that could sustain a high rate of fire for an extended period in combat. Armed with only a Hovertech Streak SRM-2 pod and a Limblauld machine gun, the Fireball regretfully proved unequal to the task. Indeed, many mech warriors complained of being outgunned when facing a pack of marauding toads, as the elementals were first called by Fedcom troops. The design's only redeeming feature was its exceptional speed, and frontline commanders quickly redeployed the Fireball as a scout and raider. Deployment the Federated Commonwealth tested the performance of the ALM-7D in frontline situations where veteran units faced the clans. They assigned the mech to rookie pilots, with the aim of building up their operational experience more rapidly. The concept proved sound, and the Federated Sons has continued this policy to this day. Given their extensive experience with light mechs, the Crucis Lancers, Deneb Light Cavalry, and Seti Hussar regiments received the first shipments in 3053. With the constant raiding up and down the clan front, it was only a matter of weeks before reports showed that the fireball was ineffective in its intended role. However, as a light unit, able to give even the phenomenally fast clan Dasher a run for its money, the mech was an excellent choice for raiding and scout operations. Ironically, the heaviest fighting the fireball saw was on the doorstep of the Korean Enterprises plant on New Avalon. During the campaign for control of New Avalon during the Fedcom Civil War, Korean Enterprises churned out mechs as fast as possible, first for Loyalists and later for their allies. The Fireball quickly became the mainstay of the Allied Reconnaissance Force. Since the end of the Fedcom Civil War, the Fireball has become a key element in rebuilding the mauled Deneb Light Cavalry and Seti Hussar regiments. Variants Since the Fireball's introduction, successful field modifications have created two variants, both of which upgrade the mech's firepower. The first, designated the ALM-8D, replaces the Streak SRM-2 and ammo in the left torso with two medium lasers and additional armour. A different tech in the same company replaced a damaged Fireball's right torso machine gun and ammo with a medium laser and some more armour, creating the ALM-9D. Both variants have performed well, and Korean Enterprises has turned out several production runs of both models. Notable Mech Warriors Captain Sonia Deckerud Assigned to the 10th Deneb Light Cavalry straight out of the NAIS in 3055, Sonia has risen to the position of Recon Company Commander by the start of the struggle for control of New Avalon during the Fedcom Civil War. Captain Deckard is an avid follower of fashion, and looks as if she could be more at home at the catwalk than the battlefield. She's worked long and hard to cultivate what some say is a striking resemblance to the late Melissa Steiner Davian, her detractors often claim that she based her support for Catherine Steiner Davian on their similar fashion sense, rather than the Archon Princess's policies. Mech Warrior Robert Gray Solitary and moody away from his mech, Gray is a hunter who comes alive in battle, enjoying the long, weary hours involved in stalking other mechs. He's also a talented scout, and as a veteran member of McKinnon's company of the 7th Crucis Lancers, also known as McKinnon's Raiders or the Fox's Teeth, he's contributed to their continued success. Initially ecstatic to finally trade his old and battered Stinger for a shiny new mech, Gray was unimpressed with the popgun armament on the fireball he received, and quickly adopted the 8D field modification. Detached from the 7th Crucis Lancers as an independent raiding force, McKinnon's company escaped the regiment's fate, Launching hit-and-run attacks to draw off strength from the forces pursuing Victor Steiner Davian across the Lyran Alliance, the Fox's Teeth relied heavily on Robert Gray's skills to survive. Ah, the little fireball. Now, uh, this one was from the 3055 Upgrade TRO, uh, with the rather nice artwork by Matt Plogg, and he's really given some dynamism to what was originally a rather wasn't terrible, but it wasn't really standout art for the Fireball, but he's really brought it to a, a different level here. I'm really impressed with this, and I'd actually love to have a miniature of the Fireball 
uh, now just to just to have their painting because it looks really cool. Uh, I also personally I love the design of it anyway. The weapon loadout is quite nice. The Street Two and the and the machine gun are really nice two two button weapon systems. I'd love to see something like this in MWO or in Living Legends. Um, both are kind of unlikely, but still, a man can dream. Even HBS Battletech, if anyone wants to mod it in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, stat-wise, walks 11, runs 17, which is pretty damn good. Uh, it's got enough ammunition to last you many, many rounds of fire. Uh, its only downside is that, well, its CT armor is 6. Well, sorry, its CT armor is 9, its internal is 6, which is it's not great. I mean, it's only going to take a couple of medium lasers, all your armor's gone, and your internal, so... That's uh, one of the big problems, like the legs don't really have much going for them, even seven on each, arms have five armor, rear torsos have two, uh, and eight, so yeah, <laughs> it's 20 tons, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not talking about a lot here, we're talking, you know, same ton as a lot of venerable light max, but I think it looks pretty cool, anyway, but uh, yeah, the the evil egg, as uh, Matt Pogs put on his, and um, uh a long time viewer, Devon, has uh, been getting a lot of stuff commissioned by uh, Matt Plog, and you can just see that a, a lot of his work is really, really striking like this. Uh, he's He's got a, a great eye for sort of uh, movement, especially with some battle mechs uh, that you can never imagine them moving due to the original art looking kind of naff, and uh, he's done a great job uh, with some of these, so yeah. Um, thanks for watching, everybody, or listening in this case. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.